Thanks for coming out to Digital Compositing for Pros! Woo woo! Okay. Um, actually, you guys give me one second. I don't know where my pen is. I'm just gonna look for that. All right, great. Um, yeah, so why pros? Because there's no such thing as noobs. You're all pros, okay? And that's pros with five uh, money marks. So, um, let's see now. What is compositing? Compositing is the combination of things. So even when we're trying to get rid of something, like a boom pole, we're actually adding elements. Now these elements can be from a lot of different things. They can be a drawing that you do, you scan in. They can be a, a text layer. They can be you know, CGI, they can be anything, right? But it involves the combination of elements. So here we have a, a great painting. And uh, if we do a mat, so we can get into mats later on, we basically cut it out, right? We can put it into another image. Thank you. All right, great. Um, so uh, here's an example of uh, how you add things together and the different stages of them. So here's a shot from the actual show. Apocalypse, right? Um, um, we got the plate. This is the clean plate that we shot. Um, then there's going to be a raw CGI pass. This is a color grading shadow pass until we get something that's more like the final image. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, why do you composite stuff? There's four different filmmaking problems that compositing helps solve. So we got one, safety. Being chased by a giant dinosaur, not safe. Not cool. Not cool. <laughs> Number two, expense. It's very expensive to be chased by a dinosaur. Real expensive. And uh, it's probably impossible to be chased by a dinosaur because they're not here. Extinct dog. Okay, and uh, <laughs> the film has... Wait, wait, wait a second, that's not... You don't know. Unless you're Michael Bay or, or George Lucas, you do not use this option for special effects, right? I like to point out this quote down here. Um, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So think about what you're going to do before you roll the camera. What is an image? An image is made up of the RGB and, if you're lucky, an alpha channel. So here we have on the uh, side here, we've got an image kind of broken up into the RGB values. So that means red, green, blue. The mountains look blue to me, yet there's a lot of uh, red in those mountains, right? There's a little bit of purple. There's a lot of uh, conflicting hues, right, that make up that image. So that's why when we're uh, using chroma keys, very difficult to isolate one color because it's made up of the combination of all these RGB elements. Video compression subsamples these RGB values, right? So different camcorders have different values. Um, like, say, the best image you could possibly get would be 444. When you get down to it, uh, some of the cameras have less color information. They look good, but they're subsampling the color. So that means you're dealing with one fourth of the image, potentially, when you're doing a chroma key. Uh, this is an example of what would it look like if you're doing, say, mini DV. Um, and that's why you get those crazy crazy chroma uh, edges on some things, right? That makes sense, everyone? Yeah. yeah! Yeah! So here's an example of uh, Tom Cruise uh, blasting some fools. Um, but this is 411 color space. So you can, can you see those uh, little jagged, uh, jagged edges there? You can really see them there. Oh my gosh. Oh, dumb. No way. No way. That's terrible. So uh, here's like a little aside. Um, there is chroma smoothing. And this kind of uh, is an attempt to get back to uncompressed video footage. So um, here we have uh, on the left, we've got uh, what the um, 5D or, or the 7D or the whatever D. This is what it shoots, right? Um, this is what they're able to rebuild using this program. So write down this program if you're shooting on DSLR stuff. Yeah! Alpha channel is basically like a cookie cutout. Like what is transparent? What's opaque? So here we have white becomes opaque, black becomes transparent in a non-inverted alpha channel. So here, this is an alpha channel I made for this image. I uh, painted it white, black, and then uh, shades of gray. And using that, I can punch out Santa Claus. All right. 
Um, so this means we can, since he's isolated from the image now, we can color grade just him. And the gray values, you see how they're not as blue as he is? That's because they were gray. They're, uh, they're less opaque. They're not the 100% um, opaqueness that Santa Claus is. Here to show you the alpha channel again, um, that's why it's not being affected as strongly. So that's important to note for when we get to track mats and lumen mats. Does everyone kind of get that, uh, that concept? Yeah, that's great. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh no! Some elements don't have an alpha channel, right? So you have to make it. That's what compositing programs are for. They're for adding in an alpha channel. So before we get into that, I'm going to kind of teach you a little bit about the interface of After Effects. Um, here we have the browser window and... Uh... Oh, hi there! Oh. Whoa! What the... Hey, Compi. It looks like you're trying to show people how to use After Effects. You need any help? Uh, yeah, Compi, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. Okay, this is the pointer tool. It, it points and selects stuff, okay. you know. And this is the high five tool. I don't know what it does. And this is a, a magnifying glass, I think. Compi, uh... And, uh th th there's a text Compi. tool here, too, but it's kind of boring. And, uh, You don't know what you're doing, man. Come on, Compi. That's really all I know how to use. Compi, I think it'd be best if you let us do the, the presentation, actually. Yeah, I think it'd be oh, 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 I know what that one is. That one's a Bezier brush, which is just like me, only really quiet. That's right, yeah, really quiet. quiet. And not distorted. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Okay, bye, Compi. Uh. Okay, that's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go back here a little bit. I'm going to open up After Effects so we can actually do a, a legitimate look at what everything is. Yeah, you got the pointer tool, that's how you move stuff. I think uh, Compi told you that. The hand tool um, basically moves your composition around, just like in Photoshop. If you want to look at the bottom corner and you're really zoomed in, use the hand tool. Magnifying glass, that's probably a result of you zooming in or zooming out. Um, I need to get uh, more resolution on this. So, oh, there it goes. My computer's super fast. I don't know if you noticed. It's the fastest computer ever. So um, <laughs> it's initializing the type engine, which is pretty important for any After Effects operation. Thanks. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll show you After Effects a little bit later when it's uh, done starting up. Uh, it's, a, it's a fast program, pretty stable. Uh, never crashes. OK, so there's um, masks and mats, right? This is one way you can add an alpha channel really quickly, really simply, just by using basic shapes. So here we have a, uh, a square and a circle. And so what we can do is we can take a basketball, and we're just going to use that mat. Um, notice again the black and the white. This all refers back to the alpha channel. And we can put the ball in space! <laughs> or we can put the ISR on <laughs> instead of the basketball. Um, feathering masks is a very important uh, part of any operation. Even if uh, you're just doing something simple like that basketball, I'd even feather that like one point. Um, because feathering it um, just looks a lot better. Here we have a, we can add in a nice explosion to the scenic landscape with some feathering. Um, if we didn't have that, uh, if we had a hard edge, it wouldn't look as realistic. Okay, cool, excellent. So yeah, pointer tool. Um, I'm gonna make a new composition because some of these are grayed out until we actually have a composition. This is just like, you know, sequence settings and final cut. So that looks fine to me. Just gonna go down here and create a new solid object. Um, just going to make it black um, because you have to have an object there for all these things to show up sometimes. So it would be helpful if we could see the whole thing. There you go. Um, so uh, leaving off, uh, we left off here with the magnifying glass. We have a, a rotate tool, which I don't know if you can really see what's going on because it's, I chose the best color in the world. Okay, yeah, here. See how um, you can rotate stuff? It rotates around this point here. And if you move this to the side, then you can rotate it around that point. That becomes very important if you say you want to have a hinge for like a puppet or um, you want your text to like rotate around a certain letter or a word. Um, you want to adjust that anchor point, which is this tool here. If you click anywhere but that point, it does nothing. Uh, so you have to click right there. Um, then we've got this. This is basically what we're talking about with the geometric shapes. This is a mask. So um, pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, I'll be here all week. Uh, we got uh, other shapes in here too. Here's a circle, I think. Or maybe it's an oval. I don't know. Use your imagination. 
Um, we got, uh, ooh, Star Tools, one of my faves. And uh, under the mask options, you notice it created a little mask option here. We've got feathering options down here. Now, does anyone, has anyone used After Effects before? That's great. I'm going to assume that Three most people, people haven't. Uh, <laughs> so um, what you do in After Effects, uh, and I'm going to bring this back to uh, Final Cut at the very end to show you you can do compositing in Final Cut, although it's very painful. Um, so I'm just going to find our timeline. Uh, okay, there we go. If you set down these guys here, if you click on the little stopwatch, you create what are called keyframes. So I can keyframe any of these values over time. So that means it's just going to move in between those settings. So I can do that with the uh, actual shape of the mask too. Say if you want the star to change shape, just uh, find a point in the future, drag these points in. Whoa! <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? It gets better, I'm, I, I promise. Um, you've got a, a, an actual, this one here, I'm just going to delete this mask. If you want to create custom shapes, there's a Bezier brush. Please don't show up, Compi. Please don't, please don't show. show up. No, don't show up. Okay. You can create a custom shape using this, and I'll go more uh, into detail about that. You've got a text tool. If you want to create text that uh, you can't really see. Um, here, I'll turn this off. You can see a little bit better. Uh, yeah, so pretty much everything you need to do uh, Compi work. You don't even need a camera. You could actually make something right in this program. All right, let's get back to the presentation. I don't know what we were doing before. I guess it wasn't part of the presentation. We're going to get back to the presentation now. Uh, okay, so um, here we got uh, a video tutorial I made about Power Windows. So this is using um, some tracking uh, and some uh, masks to get a, a, an idea of what this is. Oh. What is a Power Window, you might be asking yourself? Well, it's essentially a big fuzzy square or circle that allows us to color correct just a portion of the hey there! It looks like you're trying to composite a shark's head on this guy's body! You want any help? No, we're not doing that, Compi. No. You're not? No. No, oh, Compi. I get it. You're trying to put Nikola Tesla on a unicorn. No. No? no. Okay. Hey, um, can we get... Uh, how'd you get my... Well, I composited myself into the video. What? Uh, Isn't that great? No. You gotta go, Compi. I'm get sorry, buddy. Here. Are you sure you don't need any help? Yes. Yeah. All right, fine. Bye, Compi. Go over Compi. here, okay? Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Compi. Uh, well, my video's just been ruined by uh, an imaginary character, so uh, we're just going to see what we can do. You know what? Let's try to do some, uh, some of this stuff in the Final Cut, because I want to have as many programs open at once as possible. Oh, my God. <sighs> that was a close call. Whenever, whenever a dialogue pops up saying it wants something, just say yes. It's Always. A, it's, a, it's a good policy. Um, <laughs> Geometric primitives, all right. What we got here? Do you guys want to see color grading, or do you want to see me put a mustache on somebody, or? Mustache. Mustache, good call. <laughs> Woo! There, all right, so uh, you guys might recognize this shot. This is from uh, Pokemon Apocalypse, right? It, look, it looks pretty good, but it could use a mustache. Am I right? Luckily, I have a plate of a mustache. Right here. Don't ask me where that came from. All right, so I'm just gonna put that down here. Uh, we don't need this uh, volume because you wouldn't be interested in what I'm saying with the mustache anyways. Um, if we double click on this layer, we go under effects, video filters, mats, right? We have match, mask <coughs> shapes. So if I'm just gonna drag the filters aside so we can see what we're doing in this layer, we can create an oval. Let's just scale it to the mouth like that. Pretty good. Looks, dark. It's dark. Oh, it is too dark. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up. No, shut up. We're pros. We're that. <laughs> yeah, pros. Uh, I don't know about this, you guys. Is that better? Yeah. I'm just going to grab this mustache. I'm going to make sure it's only image. I just want to see the image. That looks like it's exactly the right size and placement. Um, <laughs> now I'm going to move it down a little bit. I'm going to scale it down a little bit here. 
And uh, one of the reasons it's uh, not looking good is because it's not color graded. <laughs> 